Hello, welcome back. Uh, the game is still currently on a seven day timer. We're in the long drawn out period between Christmas and New Year where nobody takes turns. Uh, but let's get caught up. We've got some research in enchantment done that gives us flaming arrows. Uh, and I'm going to pick up Alteration 4 next. I've made sure that we have just enough research to hit it. Uh, and that gives us uh, Wind Guide next, which is also good for archers. Uh, probably going to stop there then. I'm going to switch out the evocation for construction, maybe, but I'll talk a bit more about targets in a second. Uh, we claimed the Silver Throne, which is nice. Did some more summons, search for sites. We found two magic sites on the throne. One is a Glen of Verdant Greenery, which is an H gem. Uh, the other one's a holy site our priest found, Pool of Sanctity. Uh, this is a water gem. It also has a 5% chance to do 10 armor negating damage to demons and undead. So, pretty cool. Or if we're getting sieged by skeletons, that's uh, kind of nice. And then saw a bunch of battles. Uh, first up, we saw Tian Chi taking that province in their cap circle. There was a bunch of devils here. There's also a war minotaur. And some wizards. Uh, oh, this guy's a soul contract. wonder if that's where the devils are from. Might make sense. So we also get to see Tinchi's Bless in this battle. Uh, he has Combat Farcaster and Shock Weapons. Shock Weapons is kind of an interesting one. Uh, I think this is like the best weapon Bless in the game. So it's one armor negating shock damage plus three fatigue. I think it also stuns you as well because it's um, shock damage. It says the, the shock damage is magical and will be effective versus ethereal beings. But well, I'm not sure if that helps you actually hit ethereal beings, because I think the weapon itself remains mundane. But I could be wrong, but I think you still have to actually successfully hit an ethereal target before this procs and does anything. But I'm not sure exactly. Um, either way, these all these attacks are going to be doing extra shock damage now as well, which is... Uh, yeah, they're going to really hurt when they hit you. Just That's going to be... what is that? So it's one armor getting damage on all of these attacks. Well, I guess the lance breaks after the first one. But still, two extra armor getting damage plus fatigue plus stun. Kind of uh, rough when they start meleeing you. But I think if we have flying sacreds that land on them and have ethereal, I think they might still be kind of safe. It's tough to say. The howling bows chew through the uh, devils pretty quickly, though. It's a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, the bows are going to be pretty uh, brutal anyway. They're magic, and they do a fear effect. And they also do shock damage. <laughs> pretty powerful bows. Um, also interesting is that his god does not have his pearl. So I think that means he must have died at some point and lost it, which is kind of funny. Uh, that might suggest he didn't have a very good expansion phase, I'm not sure. Uh, but there's Pantagrater's bounty anyway. Saw some Burgress fights as well. I can see them moving into the Baron Crags, taking back a province from Barbarians again, and uh, attacking Melma. So I'll just head over to map. You can see them taking these provinces. They're sort of uh, pushing out a bit. Pretty sure Fenneker was under siege by Agartha last turn, so I'm not sure what happened to those guys. They do have a ton of units just sat in their capital at the moment, which is, you know, only one move away from me. I suppose I have to be a bit careful about them. But so uh, yeah, I think um, Ogres is probably doing okay against Lemuria now. He's got some nice stacks out. He only has two fortresses, but he's got this one now as well. Just needs to get an upgrade. Should be okay. Uh, events then, Boarwoods, we got some income. Resting Heights, we got some gnomes. And in Jeremon, we got some death gems, so not too bad. Uh, here are the gnomes, by the way. <laughs> uh, okay. I might as well just put them on this guy. <laughs> Why not? They can guard him while he walks around sight searching. Uh, caught some scouts on our throne. Nothing crazy there. And that's about it. Here's the map name. Okay, so I've been thinking about who we should attack, right? Um, Kalem is definitely at war with Pythium and probably going to leave us alone for a little bit. I don't know about Agartha. 
because I was kind of counting on them just warring Lemuria, but if they've pulled back, who knows. Ogress is at war with Lemuria though. Uh, Tianxi, I don't really know what they're doing either, but I've been trying to message my neighbors' neighbors to see what they're up to. Kind of asking what, like, Pythium, Utgard, Man, who is around here, uh, asking how their games are going. See if my neighbors' neighbors are in any wars that we might be able to get involved with. Because I'm really struggling with who we should attack. It's really tough to say. I don't want to interfere with wars against Lemuria. I don't want to attack Kalem. I don't want to attack Atlantis. I guess that kind of just leaves Tianqi, but I haven't scoured them very well yet. Um, Man shared a map of theirs, though. So I think Tianqi's territory terminates here. They have a fortress in Sermioc. But that might be it. So they might be very small. I just don't know anything about this area of their territory. So they could hold a bunch of stuff up here. I don't know. But it's possible they only have this territory plus a fort in Sermioc, and that's it. So they might be kind of small. Um, I need to figure out if that blast is going to be really bad for us or not. I don't know though. They have 35 of those ancestor vessels. But you can see that what I'm trying to do this turn is scout out the sort of periphery of their territory to see how far they extend. We get a scout here, we can see what these two provinces look like. We get a scout here, we can see what these look like. And a scout here, we can see who owns this province. So I'll kind of get a picture of what Tianqi looks like and Maybe I'll attack them next turn. For something to do. I don't know. That's kind of the plan at the moment. Um, I think maybe this is a good game to not attack anybody. Um, we could potentially just cut back on unit recruitment. Just recruit nothing but mages. We have magic 3. And we have the steel ovens as well. So we could potentially just rush to construction 6. Forge some dwarven hammers. And start making really cheap. Um, lanterns. We've got three fire gems per turn. They'd be really cheap with a hammer and the steel ovens. So, it, you know, a good strategy at this point in the game would probably be to just go up construction six turtle and just rush research until we're like a like really serious research leader. And I think that's probably like a good strategy. Um, it is unfortunately a boring strategy though, <laughs> and since I'm doing the videos. I don't know if it's going to be a very compelling watch. So I'm more tempted to just attack Tianxi anyway, which is probably fine. It just depends how well we stack up against them. Um, so let's see. So potentially we might just sit back and research for 20 turns. But I might also just attack Tianxi next turn. I don't know. Either way, it might be better to do construction anyway and then go to evocation, but it's nice to be getting a couple of research targets while you're at war with someone. Instruction doesn't really do much for us in the immediate uh, future. I don't know. But yeah, I think if you're in this position, you might just research. I sent a message to Atlantis and said to them, do you want to stay peaceful? And I offered them the, the deal where I say, I'll let you know if anyone tries to get me to attack you, if you do the same for me. They seemed happy with that. So Atlantis might be cool with us for a while. Ignoring Bogorus and Kalem. It's just a Garth I have to be nervous about. But we'll scout out Tianchi. Maybe we'll attack them next time. I don't know. I'll see if Thunder Weapons is really bad for our Bless or not, because I'm not 100% sure how it works. But uh, I'm moving some pieces into position anyway that might be a bit closer to the border. Um, so I'm moving some of these Shark units and some, uh, <laughs> some of these region onto land. And I'm getting a lab built in Gamer this turn. I'm ignoring the temple and the fortress for now. We'll just get a lab here so we can distribute distribute gems and cast rituals and stuff. Um, I think I can start... Is this in alteration or is it... Yeah, alt 4 gives us Wolven Winter. So I could just start casting this on Genji's capital every month, I think, so... I might start doing that as well. Oh, we don't have any water gem income yet, I do. Damn. I haven't actually been searching much for water, I don't think. Uh, well, maybe a little bit. Send him for water one site. Uh, we could do that though. But I'm moving the region and the sharks on land. We've got quite a bit of stuff here, but it's mostly the melee troops. Melee troops might not be great walking towards those uh, howling bows. I think we need more flying units. We don't have many flying units here now. It's a lot of them died. So I'm also going to put together some stuff in Ardigo. There's 15 flying units here. I'm basically moving all of the Ur mages there. 
of uh, different types. The uh, nature air and the air and earth, or whatever it is. So we can just do like the two types of Tengu out of Nardigo for a bit. Um, it's a bit closer to Kenji. I think if we move a big stack here to Blue Coast, and then up to Jimport to threaten this fortress, and then we also move a bunch of Flying Sacreds in this direction as well, that probably splits um, Tianqi's focus quite a bit. And then we might be able to pick off the Edge Provinces with our God. Especially since, if Tianqi's God has lost the Pearl, I don't think they can go underwater, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't have... Um... <laughs> oh no, they're amphibious, okay. What is it that the Pearl gives? Because I, th I thought the Pearl gave water something. Okay, the Pearl does give water breathing, but I guess we just have water breathing anyway? <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why does our Pearl give water breathing if we're just naturally... It's so confusing that this is an actual Pearl, but not the item. I don't know, I guess the dragon can go underwater, even without the pearl. Okay. Um, oh, speaking of pearls, incidentally, this guy casts anti-magic, and there's a hero in the battle that does um, Horde of Skeletons as well. Looks like this guy is dying. Uh, but he's immortal, okay. <laughs> um, so we know that Tianxi has enchantment 5, I believe that is? Yeah. So I suppose you could also put up domes, so maybe spamming Wolven Winter wouldn't be very good anyway. I don't know. Water Skeletons would be kind of annoying to fight into, but I don't think Tenchi gets that many Death Mages. Let's see. Cat Mage gets no death. Uh, Ancestor Guide gets D2. Okay. So those guys can spam Skellies. Spirit Masters are D1. Maybe D2. Okay, there's lots of D1. But only a little bit of D2. Maybe they can do a bit of Skelly Spam, but I don't think it's going to be a massive amount. I think what we need is overwhelming numbers of Tengus, right? Just immediately fly onto the back lines. While our uh, Sohays walk forwards. Then we can pummel them with uh, Flaming Arrows too. But we'll see anyway. I'm moving those guys to Nardigo. Guys in game are sitting still for a bit. Uh, some of the stuff in Blackport is moving out, but it's a bit slowing through here. Moving out these priests, some more uh, Tengu, some more archers. We'll start moving stuff in anyway so that we have the option of attacking them next turn if we want to. We'll see what happens. Uh, research is also, um, recruitment is also a bit weird now. Because I'm getting two like, big commanders out of my cap. Um, I thought these might be better for leading around the Tengu since they take advantage of their map move a bit better. The best, it's the most mobile commander I can recruit. I get two, two of those guys out. Getting a, another H2 Priest out of this fort as well to do some Blessing. Uh, recruiting some H1 Priests over here so we've always got Blessers going around for the Tengus. Uh, and just recruiting a bunch more Scouts as well. Um, so Mage Recruitment hasn't suffered too much. I mean, we still have like Ryujin coming in. And I think this is still... Okay, this one isn't either. <laughs> All right. So Mage Recruitment has suffered a bit, but we're getting the Ryujin still at least. And uh, yeah, we're getting some Sacreds and some Archers too. But yeah, that's the position we're in. I think it's probably... Sitting still and researching would probably be a, a really good strategy at this point. We're already big. We have, you know, okay thrown access. We can get this, and this, and this. Probably this as well if we punch through. I think we could sit still and research, but it would probably be boring, so let's try and attack Tianxi. I think that's the plan. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But that's what I'm thinking at the moment anyway, so... That was 1022. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello, welcome back. Um, first up, before we go any further, I looked up how Ethereal works. Turns out Ethereal doesn't stop you getting a hit, it just stops you taking damage, so um, a shock weapon's bless is gonna deal shock damage to us no matter what. So, good to know. Anyway, did some research, got some alteration done. Uh, I'm gonna go to 5 now, because there's an earth buff here that gives you lightning resistance, which turns out this might be pretty useful. So we'll grab that. I get Alt 5. I might also just grab Conj 5 as well for elementals, because they're always pretty useful. And then we'll do the construction. That's the new plan. Bit of Alt 5 in two turns. We're almost kind of halfway to it this turn, so get another mage next turn and don't move. It'll be fine. Uh, found more magic sites too. 
Uh, we've got a stone circle in Silvergrove and a copper idol. Gamer. Copper idol is an ur gem, I think. Stone circle is an nature gem with woodhenge druids. If we want those. Uh, Throne of the Battle. This was just pinging a throne, though, so we get to see that throne right next to Bergerus. Looks like he's probably thinking about taking this now. Got a stack pulled back to his cap while these two push forwards. Uh, yep, that looks like a doable throne as well. There is one black sorceress and one sorceress. Not very interesting units either. So I suspect he takes that. Uh, events then, we got low mark 11 nature gems and then a big one in Devara. We get 1,455 gold, a bunch of gems, and a standard of the damned. Not bad. Standard of the damned is uh, standard of the damned is one of those interesting items that I mean it has its uses. I just can't imagine ever actually forging one myself. But it lets one of your commanders just cast life drain, which is really cool. So also gives them a fear aura, I suppose. Uh, besides that, we found some scouts. We found a Tian Shi scout on our throne, so Tian Shi gets to see our army. Unfortunately. Also means he gets to see our bless, because my god's in that battle. Uh, finished the fortress in Forgiver and did some patrolling on Gamer. Uh, yeah, so we have slightly different research targets. We'll get um, shock resistance and also get large elementals, why not? But still just thinking about attacking Chenchi. I've got a bunch more scouts moving into World Pillar this turn. They can start pushing in a bit. It looks like this might be. The edge of Chen Chi's territory, though. So they have their cap and one throne. Surprisingly, I can't see their army at the moment. Although I, I suppose I don't. I moved my scout out of Panzers if it's still there. Uh, but we almost have them scouted, so I guess we can make a decision whether or not to attack them. We did push a bunch of barbarian heavy horses adjacent to Gamer this turn, which is odd. Uh, but uh, whatever, it's not a big deal. So two turns. We'll have the research target. We'll have more scouts. Probably we'll see all of his territory at that point. And yeah, I'll decide whether or not to attack. I mean, we still don't have to attack anybody, is the thing. Agatha's stack has not moved towards us, which is nice. So maybe they're still fighting Lemuria. Burgra seems to be doing fine. Uh, interesting, it looks like Lemuria is also attacking Atlantis, because they've lost this province this turn. Uh, which might explain why Atlantis was so eager to just stay peaceful with me. <laughs> but you know what, fair enough. Uh, I guess Lemuria is just uh, fighting the world at the moment. Pythium still holds this as well. They were at war with Lemuria, but I think they've been pulled away to fight Calum and some friends, so... Uh, I don't know. So we're really just fixated on this for now, <laughs> but uh, we'll see what happens. Got some more archers moving to Nardigo. We've got a bunch of mages moving here as well. We're just going to start summoning flying units, so we've got 15 of the Karasu Tengus already. Uh, I've just got two guys doing the Earth ones and two guys doing the Air ones. So we'll have another, what is that, 16 flying units this turn. So we'll have 31 flying units and 28 archers. And I'll just keep building this up. We'll have two little stacks we can push in. Merge up on his cap when we want to take that. See how it goes. Uh, I really need more archers to take advantage of flaming arrows. Where is, um... You know these got enchantments. Does this give you... Oh, Arafens at 6. Okay, so if he continues with um, enchantment research, he might get Arafen pretty quickly, which <laughs> kind of uh, cancels out all of the flaming arrows archers, unfortunately. Whatever, though. We're doing what we're doing. We'll see how it goes. So summoning in Nardigo, moving a bunch of stuff there. We got these guys coming over as well. This is a bunch of archers that we've been getting summoned in this fort for a while. So we're putting stuff in position. We'll just uh, see how things look. It's just a shame we don't just have like a good matchup that we could just walk at. I mean, I guess Burgress or Gagartha would have been the best people to attack, but yeah, I mean, they can have. I'd, I'd rather just have them dealing with Lemuria as the thing. Yeah, I don't know. Odd, odds. Um, Odd game. I'm really not sure what to do. I feel like I should probably attack Tian Chi, but I'm a bit nervous that I don't stack up very well against them, even if they are small. 
But uh, we, we'll see. I mean, we're doing a lot of research, right? We'll we'll start picking up some spells and see how things look. All right, that's the time then. <laughs> that's ten twenty three. I'm also doing some site searching on that uh, throne we just took. There's a Ryuji in there with F two W three. I think that's the only important thing though. So that's ten twenty three. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello, welcome back. Uh, another huge turn for magic sites. Got two in Nardigo and one in Gamer. At uh, Nardigo, we have a Meteorite Cliff. There's an Earth Gem and an Astral Pearl. And another Grove of Fertility, so... Pretty good. Uh, we also found another one in Gamer as well. Rage Wind Heath. One Earth Gem and a Fire Gem. So, uh, Gem Income, you know, looking pretty good. We even got an event this turn in Unforgiver. Seabed is cracked open. So we also got a Fire Rift. Another two Fire Gems. Uh, yeah. You know, the last time we did a late age game, it was Rago, and I found no gems. It sucked, and it really kind of put me off late age. This is much healthier. I, this is, you know, this isn't bad at all. And we got no income. I uh, saw a battle in Ulifa. This is Bogorus taking that throne that we saw them pinging. Let's just see if anything crazy happens here. We've got communion, we got some stone skin, raised dead, mind burn, arcane bolt. I guess some of those spells are coming from the enemy. Mostly just seeing lots of arrows firing. What are you guys casting? Twist fate on yourselves? Always a classic. One of the mages dies. Some of these guys have had enough. Alright, not learning much from this, but uh, they have a throne. So if they claim it immediately, we'll be able to see what it is next turn. Uh, but that was Ulifa. So it cost them 43 units, but I assume not much of this is too interesting. These guys are a bit expensive. These guys are 8 gold. Wow. That's really cheap. 8 gold javelin units. That's pretty good, right? What else we got? 8 gold archers. 30 gold standard. 10 gold spearmen. Yeah, that didn't cost much, did it? Uh, events then, we got the fire site in Unforgiver. Ever playing, we got some unrest, unfortunately. It is a wasteland, though, so. Uh, Ilmire, we got 89 gold. Mild winter has enabled your traders to travel extensively, and livestock to survive the winter. Doesn't amount to much, though. Uh, we caught three scouts on our throne this turn, so <laughs> the whole world gets to see our bless, unfortunately. Probably shouldn't be patrolling. <laughs> it's probably actually a uh, mistake to be patrolling, but whatever. A bunch of scouts. We also then received a very suspicious message from Man. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Uh, I did some patrolling. Uh, and here's the map now. Still just distributing units between these two points. Uh, still on tar on target for well targets. Uh, I've made sure we've got enough research to hit alt five. So we'll have that. Good to zoom up to con Conjuration after that. Um, Alt-5 would, would allow us to cast Mother Oak if we wanted to. But we would need an N5 Mage. Uh, we're doing pretty well on Nature Gems now. We're up to 7 per turn. We do use quite a few to summon Tengu, but... 7 per turn with 37 stockpile, that's enough to work towards Mother Oak. So, since we only have N2 Mages, we need 2 boosters. And even then we only get to N4. Uh, but we can summon some N3 mages. So in Conjuration, we have some national summons that will give us that. I'm pretty sure this Mori no Kami thing will give us an N3 mage. So we could slap two boosters on one of those guys and cast Mother Oak. And uh, to do that, we need to be able to forge a Thistle Mace, which we can do, and a Moonvern bracelet, which we cannot do. So I've switched all my forts over to recruiting the Astral guys. Because um, these could potentially come with N2. And then N2 plus 1 booster lets them forge a Moonvine bracelet. So maybe that'll amount to something? I don't know. But all three forts are summoning the on Miyogis at the moment. Just to see if we can get a Moonvine bracelet forger. That would be nice. Uh, besides that, still putting armies together. I'm going to move a lot of the flying units over towards Gamer. Because this is like my main army. 
that's going to probably try and bump into all those archers. So a bunch of flying units we've been summoning here are being led by the long range commander. I'm going to move to my cap and pick up some more flying units plus some archers and then terminate in gamer. And at that point I guess we attack maybe. Let's go and get more of, more of Tianxi's territory anyway. You can see they have a palisade over here as well. That makes three forts. And I can also see that they're building a fortress in Ungbeiloth as well. So potentially four. But so far I can't really see much of an army besides what we've already seen. So we have two large armies and we've got some spells to actually help us fight them. Maybe it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll see. Put some Dominion in Shadow Seek so I can very safely take that with my god on turn one of the war. Fly straight over to these two if we're feeling saucy. Who knows? But yeah, we'll have about 50 more flying units with Game Your Army. Uh, I'm moving some... these guys are moving over. So 20 of our Soheis moving towards the Nardigo army, which mostly just has a bunch of archers at the moment. Uh, but then we'll we'll keep doing more flying summons over here. I had to turn off some of the flying summoners to make sure we hit our target, although it might be overkill at this point. I've been changing some things. Let's see, if you do some... Actually, do we have an one instead? Actually, no, I think we're doing the Ur ones. Let's do the Karasu Tengus, the nature ones. Call them air ones. That I think they're earth, not not air, right? Yeah, because they both have air. <laughs> so the earth ones, we have two people doing those, and one person doing the nature one. Okay. Yeah. Does that still allow us to hit our research target? No. So I had things perfect. Okay. So yeah, we do just enough research to hit our research target this turn. Not that it matters much, but I'm still summoning flying units here, moving some flying units over here, I'm trying to get as many archers out as possible because we don't really have many. Unfortunately, we can't really recruit many. This is where we get the bulk of our archers from, and it's only like, what, seven a turn? Three from here. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would be nice to have more Flaming Arrows archers. But, oh well, it is what it is. Uh, besides that, not much else to say. We're doing full recruitment. We've got some more uh, Ryujin over here. We've got a Nature one, uh, an Air one, Earth one. Gonna move all our and all of our Earth two mages are gonna be with armies to make sure they can cast shock cries. Uh, so we're probably gonna be carrying a lot of these Earth gems around. Uh, and over in Lomark, I'm gonna forge Robo Missile Protection and Rabbit Foot Charm alongside the Alquils we're making, just so that we can protect important mages from well from all kinds of things, taking arrows, random arrows in combat. Um, so, because we don't have many fire mages, we've got like one F2 mage over here. This is the only guy who can do uh, flaming arrows, so he's going to get a robe and a amulet. Make sure he stays alive. In game of the F2 mage is a region though, which is a bit tankier, especially in dragon form. I'm not sure if there's any reason not to have them in dragon form if they're not wearing items, because in... Well, I guess they're always in dragon form, but in... <laughs> In bipedal dragon form, or I don't know, upright <laughs> dragon form, they have fewer hit points and I think lower protection as well, and no storm immunity. But they're just worse overall. But uh, I guess they have item slots, which is the thing. So, in general, when they're kind of in danger, I'm just having them in dragon form. I think that's fine. Uh, anyway, that's the turn. So things are still okay. I can see this is still owned by Lemuria, interestingly. I can also see that, uh, I think it was somewhere over here, yeah, Lemuria's sieging one of Agatha's, Agatha's forts over here. So these wars are still happening, which is good for us. It means all of our neighbours are in wars at the moment. And I can't see Kalim's war, but I'm pretty sure they're still at war with Pythium. Although Pythium had a province around here, here right, which is gone, so... That might mean uh, Pythium's losing territory, which is not good. Because then Kaelin might wrap up their war quickly. Who knows? That's a turn, though. Uh, so that's turn 24, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.